All right, guys, so hope you're doing well. So today we will be discussing an MACD strategy which has performed spectacularly well in many of the stocks. This is Johnson & Johnson, and then we've got HD, Tesla, Apple, and the list just goes on. So I hope you know what an MACD strategy is. I'm not gonna go deep into it, but just as a refresher. So MACD basically has got two EMAs. So one is a 26 day moving average and then the 12 period moving average. So this is from Investopedia, so you can check it out. So then they subtract this uh, EMA of the 12 and the 26, and that's the MACD line. And then you have a signal line, which is basically the nine period one. And when that crosses, you have basically got a trade and also the histogram is basically the difference between these two lines so when the difference is negative then you have this red ones and if the difference is positive um, then you're basically uh, got this green histogram so generally the idea is when you get a green histogram you enter the trade and when you get a red histogram you close the trade and goes to a short position but it's not really the best path to succeed there are better ways uh, there are ways to change these numbers, it's 12, 26, 9, and that will give you spectacular results and also changing and tweaking the entry and exit conditions can give you some tremendous returns. So hopefully you understood what an MACD strategy is. So now let's not only discuss the MACD strategy, but also how the strategy performs so well, even uh, predicting uh, before the crash, we'll be exiting before the crash and also picking up great bottoms as well. So uh, we'll discuss that thoroughly, so let's start. So this MACD is essentially the standard MACD, which you can get by just typing in MACD and then basically the moving average conversion divergence. So our idea will be to uh, first plot the graph similar to this and then we'll work from there. So let's start with the coding bit. So what you do is you just click on open and then create a strategy and this is what you get. So make sure the version five is not deleted off. So I'm gonna delete off the rest of the thing so I'm going to delete this one off and I'm going to delete that one off as well. So overlay equals false. So basically overlay is when the chart overlaps on the uh, candlestick chart instead of a separate kind of a window. So let's start coding. So we're going to write fastl, which is the fast period. So fastl equals 12. And then slowl equals 26. And then MACDL equals nine. So we just basically two all 26 and nine. So now let's calculate the MACD. So I'm just going to give it capital letters. MACD equals uh, TA dot EMA close comma 12 minus TA dot EMA close comma 26. So hopefully instead of 12, sorry, it's basically fast L and slow L. So when we make changes, it'll be applied everywhere so now we've got the macd calculation so now let's do the signal as well so signal line will be equal to ta dot ema close comma macdl so now we need to calculate the histogram which is basically the difference between these two so hist equals macd minus signal macd minus signal so hopefully everything is clear uh, we're now going to plot these. So basically all you need to do is use the plot function. Um, so we need to plot the histogram. So first we plot the histogram, comma. Uh, we'll just give it a title. Title equals uh, MACD underscore hist. And then we need to give it a style, which I have discussed of people who are new to TradingView coding. Uh, feel free to check out our ultimate TradingView Pine script. It's purely for beginners. Uh, I'll give a link in the description box so you can check it out, along with uh, many other strategies as well. So style equals plot.style, uh, plot.style underscore histogram, and then color equals color dot, let's do black here. So then we plot the histogram, we also need to plot the MACD so plot MACD uh, comma title equals MACD line MACD line um, and 
and then we do we don't have to initiate the style because the style by default is a line so we'll just do the color uh, so color dot just give it blue so you can make your own changes as well and then we need to do the signal line as well so plot signal equals uh, I mean sorry signal comma title equals signal underscore line and color equals color dot orange so hopefully this will go through so I'm just gonna rename this to MACD underscore strategy so MACD underscore strategy I'm just gonna save that So I'm just going to add to the chart. If there is an error, we will uh, figure out what our errors are. So basically, there is some sort of errors going on here. Uh, we don't have the exact same graph. So let's see where we went wrong. So here, the signal, I think, is where we went wrong. So signal will be uh, MACD, uh, comma, MACDL. So that should sort out that problem. So that's a mistake from my part, apologies. So there you go, so we've got a graph which looks almost similar to the graph which is the official indicator of the Pine script, uh, apart from the color, so forget about the color, but everything else looks visually the same. I'm just gonna put this down here so we can actually see. So the best way to check is to check the values here. So the values here is what we want to check out. So if you check the values here, so it's 0 0.23, 2 0.28, 2 0.05. So if you look somewhere else, minus 0 0.96, 1.39, and 2.35. So hopefully um, you guys understood the coding bit. Anyways, I leave the entire code in the description so you guys can copy paste it. So now coming back to the strategy. So this is why you're watching this video or you have subscribed to our channel to come up to see uh, good strategies. So I'm just gonna do an if statement. So if hist is greater than zero, so we look at one by condition, and and close is greater than ta dot close uh, ta dot sma close comma two fifty. We do strategy dot enter strategy dot entry long and strategy.long. So um, we need to change these numbers as well. So in order to get a great strategy. So the numbers I'm gonna put in is 50, uh, 75 and 35. So why or how have I come across these numbers? So for that, you need to understand what optimization is. So optimization is basically changing these values of 12, 26, 9, and also changing these values of 250 and try to figure out what is the best strategy ideal for this um, indicator. Uh, so you get to compare the results and the returns and the drawdowns and the risk metrics and everything by optimizing this value. So this is basically called optimization. So this is used in machine learning models and also in AI. So it's the same thing as YouTube recommending what kind of videos you want to watch. So you watch a few trading videos and you get recommended my trading video. So that's like optimizing what you just watched right now. So it's not as easy as you think. So optimization requires a certain amount of coding. So once you optimize those values, then you apply it on a training data and a testing data. So you apply this on a training data and see whether it has worked. So for us, our training data is stocks, not just one stock, but like thousands of stocks. So you check all these thousands of stocks and then you see whether it will work on the testing data as well. So this methodology is heavily used in machine learning as well. So people who have done my course, uh, they have surely come across this in our platform in AmiBroker. So in AmiBroker, we do the optimization and also the training and testing data, which can also be called as the walk forward analysis. Um, you also get 10 free strategies that has beaten the markets. So once we get the training data and testing data, then we do a Monte Carlo simulation. 
So I'm not gonna go deep into all these things. So people who have done this course will know it thoroughly, but if you wanna do the course, feel free to check it out on our webpage at quantprogram.com. So now we've got the entry signal. Now we also need the exit signal as well. So if close is less than ta.sma, close comma 250, we do strategy.exit, strategy.exit. Sorry, it's a strategy dot close, and then you just keep the quotation of long. So sorry here, we don't need strategy dot long. We just need long. So I'm gonna save this. So before that, let me check if everything is order. So hopefully you understood what's going on. So by the way, here there's a tab. So I get lots of emails asking uh, the code is having an error. So basically, all you need is when you go to a, the next line, you just do a tab or you give four spaces. So when you copy paste, the problem becomes that the codes can be crunched up. So this entire code is available in the description box. So when you copy and when you paste it, make sure there is four spaces here or a tab and make sure it looks exactly like the code in the uh, video because copy pasting always makes the codes crunched up and in coding, if you miss one space or add an, another space, it can give out an error. So, so far everything looks okay. So I'm just gonna add this to the chart. I'm gonna save this first and then add this to the chart. So there you go, our strategy is ready. So one of them was the previous one. So I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna delete off all these things and just add it all over again. I'm gonna delete this one as well, the official indicator. I'm just gonna add this to the chart now. Save it and add it to the chart. So now I'm gonna to go to the overview section. So you see here it's 0 0.03, 0 percent drawdowns. These are not correct results. So we need to make a few changes in the property section. Um, so I've discussed this in a pullback strategy as well. Let's say you buy orange for $100 and sell it for $200. So technically you've made 100% return. So that's what should be displayed here. But the problem is it's compared to a 1 million portfolio. So when you compare $100 to a 1 million portfolio, that's like, 0.01%, so that's like really low. So that's where uh, trading you has got a problem. So you need to change this to 100% equity. So that gives you accurate returns of that strategy. So even if this is not 1 million, even if it's 100,000, you make the change, it still gives you almost exactly the same returns. The rounding of numbers can be changed, but then you get the actual results of the, especially the maximum drawdown, which is our risk metric. So make sure you change this to 100% equity. Otherwise, the problem becomes it's compared to a 1 million or whatever the initial capital is. So it gives you a completely different uh, result and that can be a real big problem, especially uh, in managing risk metrics and also the list of the trades. So make sure you change this to 100% equity so you get the accurate results. So even if it's 100,000 or 1 million or 10 million, or the percentage return will always be the same. So never look at the dollar terms, always look at percentage the percentage of net profit and the percentage of maximum drawdown. So even if I change this to 10,000, it will almost come around 460%. So 457% because of the rounding of the numbers, the drawdown is almost similar as well. The graph is almost similar. So now let's compare this, uh, this result and see whether it works. So just applying it on one stock is not enough. That's why I told you about the trading data and testing data. So I check it over thousands of random stocks and see whether it works or not. So there are obviously better strategies by optimizing these values, which obviously I won't be telling you, but if you know optimization and trading and testing data and walk forward analysis and Monte Carlo simulation, you can come up with far better strategies than this, but this is just an example, just a platform for you guys to figure it out. So let's compare the results. So I'm just going to minimize this, uh, where it uh, closed and where it ended. So I'm going to hide off this 200 day moving average. So if you can see, this is the crash on uh, the February, the coronavirus crash. It got out much earlier than the crash. So that's a good thing. And then it really picked up the large move from here, from long from here, all the way to 435, which is really, really cool. Um, let's see in 2008 financial crisis, how it performed. So again, in 2008 financial crisis, it got out at the top, which is really good. Not perfectly at the top, but before the crash took place. So we were able to 
uh, save the drawdowns completely. And then it was really instrumental in catching the bottom, almost the bottom again, and then it ride very well. It rode very well all the way to the top. So I like to test all the strategies first on SPY because generally if it works on the SPY, it generally tends to work uh, in most of the stocks. So SPY is this and let's do QQQ. Let's do the strategy tester there. Again, QQQ is providing pretty decent results. IWM, again, it's okay. It's not something special, but still SPY, QQQ and IWM have given me the green signal that this strategy works well. So now I can apply this on stock. So I'm just gonna randomly check it on all the stocks. So let's do PayPal, 329%, Facebook or Meta, 602, JP Morgan, just 52%, but it's okay. Now, uh, again, Procter & Gamble, 471, 51% drawdown. So what you need to do is, these results are good, but don't just apply it on one stock. You need to make sure that it's diversified across all instruments out there. So you need to apply it over, let's say 20 or 30 or 40 stocks, then you're protecting your portfolio because there will be periods when certain stocks will give you a huge drawdown of 51%. So in that scenario, other stocks will perform spectacularly well. So for example, here, Walmart had got a massive drawdown at 73%. So there are ways to reduce this drawdown, which I, I teach in the course. And obviously reducing the drawdown will slightly reduce the net profit as well, but that's okay. We are managing our risk efficiently. Johnson & Johnson, HD, and then Tesla, and then Apple. Amazon. So the list just keeps on going. Nvidia. You can just keep on checking everything and practically most of the stocks have performed well. So I have done the portfolio test across many stocks and it looks really good. Um, let me just try out some of the Bitcoin as well just to see whether it works. And yeah, it's okay. It's 160% with just a minimalist drawdown of just 18%, but still it looks okay. So let's try some international stocks. Let's try some Indian stocks, uh, which are quite volatile, but that will get an idea on whether small caps and you know international stocks, it works well. So this is because of no data because we only have one closed trade. So again, it looks pretty decent in the international stocks as well. So there you go. I'm, I'm not going to go deep into this anymore, but then I hope you guys got an idea on how this strategy works. And then again here, Bajaj Finance, it went long right here on the 10th MMA. It was able to hold on to this for a substantial period of time, ride the trend completely. And again, avoid that uh, uh, 2020 crash as well. So it's a really good strategy, but like I said, make sure that you diversify as much as possible and feel free to change these values. Feel free to experiment the entry signal. Feel free to experiment the uh, exit signal as well, because the more you experiment, the more uh, idea you get and the better strategy you can come up with. But if you have any time to spend on optimizing and learning how to do Monte Carlo simulations and walk forward analysis, that would be a great advantage because you can come up with strategies that nobody else can and strategies that has worked. Uh, I'll also give links to many other strategies which are on our YouTube channel, so you can check them out as well. So I hope you like this. Have a great day.